hello students in this second session on bernard shaw saint john we are to see how shaw makes use of history in his play saint john my plays are sui generis sui generis in latin means of its own kind so bernard shaw has to say about his plays that they are unique they are special they have certain specific qualities about themselves Eric Bentley the most authentic critic on Bernard Shaw has certain views about St John the most ambitious drama of Bernard Shaw and they are worth considering he says St John is an attempt at several kinds of synthesis one of Shaw's periodic attempts to gather together in one work all that had been on his mind through several preceding works to unite and transcend them when mrs shaw suggested joan as a subject to her husband and when he read the records of joan's trial as made available by jules quekeret shaw must have realized that here was an opportunity to study and recreate a person who united in herself so much that he had divided between his practical and his idealistic characters it almost seems that if joan never existed shaw would have had to invent her what does the career of this living synthesis demonstrate so joan the living synthesis that is joan who has certain qualities certain characteristics fused together in one person what does her career say whether she was successful or was she a failure so when we are to evaluate her career in terms of success and failure we need to concentrate upon certain factors so whether joan can be thought to have succeeded depends wholly upon the criterion of success in war she outdoes the most gifted professional soldiers so in that sense she was a success yet after her victories she is outdone by the same professionals and in this sense she was a failure the effect of her victories was lasting so she was a success she was outwitted and burnt ultimately so she was a failure yet after her death the practical men decided that they had made a mistake in this sense she was a success would they then like to have her back again no that would be inconvenient for them so she is a failure in this sense <coughs> saint john is shaw's most ambitious drama and this is the only one with an irreconcilable conflict there is a conflict that cannot be resolved <coughs> in most of shaw's plays even those that end on unsolved dilemmas the problems are ultimately patched up if not solved and irreconcilability is never at the center of the action in saint john it is the irresistible force of a genius meets the immovable object of social order so her genius has to fight against the social order Shaw is not writing an individualist defense of Joan. He is not defending Joan or a collectivist defense of social order. Neither is he defending the social order. He is depicting the clash. So the clash between the two is depicted in the drama Saint Joan. Shaw's play is about the individual and the collective. Or if we think of it in terms of time. the simultaneous need for stability and change shaw cannot with the anarchists and their myriad unconscious sympathizers resent authority so he cannot uh, be against authority that stands for stability he finds it requisite for order and permanence so authority is required in order to we want bring about order permanence discipline in life as well as in society he cannot with the authoritarians reject non conformity 
but he cannot also side with the authoritarians uh, rejecting completely the non conformists the the people who are challenging the authorities who are questioning the authorities who are against the authorities posing uh, questions posing a threat to these to the authorities so he finds it requisite for all human development because all these things all this questioning all this resentment against the authorities all this challenge against the authorities is required in order that human race develops so for the development of the human race this is a prerequisite quality and this is needed so he must therefore show john the non conformist as mm. good so john is shown as good and he must show the inquisitors as reasonable the inquisitor must be convinced and convincing yet john must be no agnes bernoy who was a german and who was condemned for witchcraft and ultimately drowned shaw feels no teutonic glee in the sacrifice of an individual to the good goddess of history and no anarchistic joy in the defiance of church and state his purpose and his achievement were to maintain an exact balance between john and the judges so he is not siding with either john or his her judges he is trying to bring about a balance between the two in saint john the happy fact about his impartiality is that he seems to be not on neither side like say galsworthy in strife but on both sides so he is posing his arguments for john and against john and he is trying to bring about a balance between the two between john and her judges and shaw's noble characterization carries the play beyond the political historical theme to an ultimate question will this world ever be a home for higher men the higher men that is men of genius like john whether they they would be they would ever find a place in this world or not in the quintessence of ibsenism shaw writes every progress means a duty repudiated and a scripture torn up the shawian protagonists who are dedicated to progress of the human race have to consistently repudiate the established notions of duty and tear up outmoded scriptures so shawian protagonists who are dedicated to the progress of the human race and who want to bring about change in society they are constantly fighting against authority they are constantly challenging authorities this this brings them into a headlong collision with the bulwarks of established institutions the law givers of society so they are constantly in conflict with or they are constantly at war with the established institutions and the so social order we find this conflict throughout shaw's major work it is dramatized sometimes in the comic but more often in the tragedy comic mode it is notable that in none of the tragedy comedies written before the war does the shawian iconoclastic hero suffer martyrdom having lived through a global war and the derision of his countrymen for his specific idea this he has been crit- criticized for being peace loving for his peace loving ideas shaw could not be confident about the fate of his world bettering hero for long his heroes who were dedicated to the progress of human race who wanted to better human society indeed in shaw's development as a delineator of the anti establishment heroes his dramatization of the protagonist actual martyrdom seems inevitable in saint john we find the summation of shaw's dramatic career a confrontation between the mighty forces of societal institutions 
and the hero's personality which can be resolved only by his absolute surrender or death faced with the dilemma of choosing between his convictions and his death so he is always in a conflict always in a state of dilemma and he has to choose between his faith and his death and the shovian hero ultimately chooses death over his faith such a martyrdom however leads to ironic reversals for both contending forces the individual as well and the social order whereas the established order finds that it has failed to conquer the spirit of the hero though they have won though they have won the human his physical body but his spirit has not been conquered and must in the perspective of time admit defeat the hero rises victorious after his death and his ideas are thereby vindicated in the hero's death lies his victory and in the society's persecution of the hero lies its defeat saint john dramatizes this essentially tragic comic irony of the human race and its progress the weeping of the angels at the burning of the savior of mankind and the laughter of the gods at the blindness of the as yet underdeveloped human beings who fail to recognize the true worth of the savior during her lifetime and ultimately only after their death they are recognized as saints so whole shows plays saint john has attracted the most critical attention and they have the these core aspects have been mostly discussed his use of history the thematic significance of the conflict between the saint and society the form of the play whether it is tragedy or tragic comic and the necessity and function of the epilogue so how does shaw make use of history in his play saint john here in this play shaw set himself the dual task of rescuing history from the idolaters as well as the debunkers of john and by disregarding mere pedantry in the presentation of history on the stage and of pointing out the relevance of john's murder to the world of today shaw had considered john's life as a subject for drama for a number of years he attributes the scandalous portraiture of john in henry 6 by shakespeare as his failure to understand the forces of history the renaissance dramatists according to shaw did not know that the world is finally governed by forces expressing themselves in religions and laws which make epochs rather than by vulgarly ambitious individuals who make rows by contrast shaw claims he has let the medieval atmosphere blow through his play freely by presenting not merely a personal accident but the major historical movements of the period Shaw does not consider the debunking of Joan by Shakespeare and Voltaire as misleading as the romanticizing of Joan by Schiller, Mark Twain and Andrew Lang. Shaw's achievement lies in saving Joan from her worshippers who mourn her death but miss its significance. The romantics like Twain may give accurately enough the names and dates concerning Joan's career, trial and execution. but they all break down on the melodramatic legend of the wicked bishop and the entrapped maiden shaw's major departure from twain and lang is his presentation of joan's trial as a fair and just one according to the then legal and ecclesiastical practices the tribunal was not only honest and legal shaw writes but exceptionally merciful if jones judges were just and merciful wherein then lies the horror of her burning melodramatic writers like lang and twain had provided simplistic and wrong answers they put the whole blame on the rascally bishop 
and the cruel inquisitor this view of jones burning according to shaw equates her death with the deaths of innocent girls by accidents and is therefore dramatically of very little significance then the real culprits shaw asserts are not the individuals involved in jones trial but the medieval institutions which in his play he subjects to close scrutiny by absolving jones judges of corruption shaw convicts society past and present so who is at fault society at large is at fault the historical play gets transmuted into shaw's usual play of social criticism it is not mere historical curiosity that attracted shaw to the subject instead it is the relevance of jones burning to shaw's own age he wants to show it to his own age his artistic purpose is to charge our consciences because the trial and execution in rouen in 1431 might have been an event of today the whole value of john to us is shaw told his listeners on a 500th anniversary how you can bring her and her circumstances into contact with our life and our circumstances how her death her martyrdom can be relevant today to understand john's character he insisted we must understand her environment and considered in this light a 20th century audience would turn out to be as guilty of burning the jones of their age as was the 15th century we have not changed over the centuries we are still the same this didactic aim in shaw's view of the historical facts of jones life displeased many a professional historian and literary critic j m robertson for example sought to save history from shaw in a book length study study to one historian shaw wrote a letter in which with delightful irony he warned against the scholarly assumption of possessing the absolute truth of history disclaiming his ability to wholly understand a character like john shaw said that he himself only tried to arrange the facts of a life to meet the exigencies of the stage shaw does not aim at a literal truth to history for his presentation of john instead he merely claims the privilege of all playwrights to condense into 3 and 1/2 hours a series of events which in their historical happening was spread over four times as many months so as to bring them within the unities of time and place imposed by the stage conditions shaw cites how he had to compress jones excommunication recantation relapse and death at the stake which actually took days into about half an hour in order to meet the unities of time and place similarly he had to combine with dunois's character that of the dakelin con admittedly these are not deliberate distortions of historical facts what the closest critics have objected to most are so called anachronisms the interpretation of jones character and age in terms of later concepts like protestantism and nationalism which tend to break the audience's illusion of watching a medieval play this is precisely shaw's intention in using words and phrases which remind his audience of the brutal fact that his own age is in no sense superior to the alleged barbarism of the 15th century to further emphasize the contemporaneity of jones history shaw added 
the epilogue although even for the epilogue shaw claims essential historical truth it nevertheless breaks the theatrical illusion of the middle ages making time past the time present and vice versa saint john thus becomes a play about contemporary social institutions and the human waste caused by their perpetuation as in other tragic comedies in this play also the shawian idea of human progress is embodied in the solitary figure of the protagonist who is in conflict with the defenders of the status quo